Net. Okay, so I'm going to continue along with this OpenHFT project. Um, I started off with this nuclear open source HFT option video, and I've spent a couple of days looking at the code. I will say that this is a big monster of a open source project with three, probably four different major products, but if you come under here under chronicle.software, the uh, vendor behind this project, you can see all the different projects here. Uh, the ones, uh, a bunch of them are open source, so I'll cover the first three here, the Chronicle Q, Map, and Engine, and just show you what I'm planning to uh, do. So, um, if you just click on any of these options, it will describe what the product does. Here's the open source versus the enterprise. Um, there is some good options obviously with the enterprise but as far as I can tell it's quite a expensive option uh, maybe I'm, I can't say I'm, I'm going to estimate minimum a thousand dollars a month so knowing that I could be as I said I could be very 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 deadly wrong on the uh, pricing so again you just come in understand this nuclear option open source HFT um, this is the first video leading into this open source. So what I've done is I've gone through the source code. Um, it's divided up into this actual source code, these products, and they're pretty lengthy. They can easily overwhelm you. There's also, I've gone over this in the previous video, the testing packages, testing all the different capabilities of these uh, projects. So the best way I figured to go over this and to approach it is instead of going through each and every one and trying to understand it because it can and will most likely overwhelm you, I just focus on the uh, projects um, that are involved with actual trading. So obviously, as I said before, you watch the videos that I posted before, that this open source package was originally designed for high frequency trading. So there are some examples, very basic ones you can use to introduce yourself to these open source uh, products. So the first one I'm gonna show you is uh, this capability. It's kind of like a, uh, a pricing engine. And basically what it will do is um, it will download source code from I'll just close all these. What it will do is it will um, download uh, data from wherever it's all simulated. But the idea here is just to download data from some kind of data source provider uh, that you can feed onto the equivalent of a queue and be able to feed it into um, another process that will uh, basically analyze the data and then issue orders. So we'll take a look at those in a little bit but uh, you can see here here's the data elements instrument big bid price uh, and then there's the ask now remember this is not BART data we're dealing with this is high frequency data so this is sub second data so you're only going to get and deal with the bid and ask okay so as I said I'm just going to give you a very very high level of this I'm not here to teach you Java as I said before you need to be a fairly accomplished uh, Java developer to really understand how this works. So here, um, you can see here, there's two different clients, one and two. Um, I know one of these uh, projects have the capability to have two separate JV JVM processes running and they can communicate with each other through uh, shared data files. As you can see here, this, you, this is your directory, I believe, that you uh, keep the file in. And uh, this is just another example of how to use um, this feature. So we've gone, so this is the first one here, the client to main for trading. But you can see here, you can feed it um, onto some kind of mock queue, like simulating uh, data as you may have seen me work with interactive brokers or IQ feed. 
okay um, and just adds it to the uh, the pool I guess as they call it and process it so let me just try running this Sometimes you can run, sometimes you can test them from within your uh, IDE. In my case, I'm using NetBeans. So they're trying to make a attempt at writing this. So here you go, it's downloading um, the latest data for uh, MVN, I believe. Yeah, it's using Maven. And. Uh, We'll see what happens. So, in the meantime, let me show you another uh, package we can play around with. Some of these don't build for some reason, and uh, I can't remember the combination of what gets them running because uh, one listens to another. Oh, I believe I have to run this guy first. This is the server main. Um, so, these two apps talk to each other. So what I've done was um, to get these running properly, these were initially set at 9090, port 9090, but I just gave it um, a, a custom port of 9088, and the same thing somewhere in here, right here. So because they now are able to uh, talk to each other. So here, um, another highlight, is to use YAML logging. Uh, I'm probably going to keep the same. Uh, one of the documents in the engine, he does go over why um, there's different formats that they will uh, write uh, files to, but he's, he said he gives a pretty good reason to use YAML, so that's what I'm planning to do. Okay, so let me just launch this one first. Um, one file. It's running. Okay. There we go. Okay, so it launches. So try to download some Maven dependencies. As you can see here, it's downloading the plugin. And then we can launch the previous client to main program. So there we go. So now it's set up the endpoint for the server on port 908088. So if I launch this other, uh, this should run now. So before we got uh, an exception because it couldn't connect into it. So this is just to demonstrate on how to log and send data across uh, your queue, or equivalent of a queue. Um, so it did print out some stuff, but then still something happened here. I'm not going to get into it. But uh, I just want to show you that it does do something. It seems to work OK up to a point. All right, so that's the engine. Um, I'll continue to look at that another time. All right, so the next one we're going to look at is um, Chronicle Q. That's the other product. Let's we'll see. Uh, so in here, I've listed the proper projects you need to go to. So the engine. Already talked about. So the particular project that I ran previously is this one: Net Open HCFT Chronicle Engine EG. So that's what this engine EG refers to. Okay. So next project we want to try and run is the Chronicle Q. So this is the project we want to run. Actually, I believe um, it's this one. That's the one we want to run. Uh, 
Chronicle Q micros. Okay. So let me try to load that up. Okay, so we have our text package. And then here's the micros. So here, this one's more related around orders. So basically what this will do, this will log all the data all the time. And even if the execution of this Chronicle Q crashes, it still somehow writes data to your file. Now when I test run it, uh, it will chew up quite a bit of data depending upon where you set your um, data uh, folder at. So here, let me just close out all the other files. So these are your different object types. So in this case, we have um, the symbol, uh, the side order. I'm still trying to figure out, I've never heard of the side order. Nothing to do with pizza, I don't think. Limit price and quantity. Order idea. Uh, and then we have a listener. I've talked about that, that before. So I guess we can set that up you've been part of my interactive brokers workshop API workshop I did talk about that um, so with the manager and here it has a new order here's your different um, elements as well and in here as well you can place an order based upon the number of conditions buy price is greater than the limit price, then just do a simple order, okay? Or a sell, right here. As I said, it's fairly simple. Here's the side, buy, sell. Sided market order, sorry, sided market data combiner. Here we get the listener. book which I'll show in a minute uh, and then the price so here it instantiates it and we have our listener we set up here's our how we set up our listener so this is the place where you put your listener code price and then top of book okay so let's try running this I believe it would be this one you have to test it As usual, um, there are probably something I'm not doing. We have to launch this, the listener. Yeah, so I not can't remember if I got this code running or not, but I can still try to figure it out, reverse engineer it. So our last example is um, here, uh, it's the Chronicle map I'm going to show you. But So I've shown you the Chronicle Q, Chronicle Engine, now we're doing the last app, Chronicle Map. This is more involved with uh, portfolio, the examples used are adequate just to give you an, an idea how to run this from a trading perspective. So 
under here, the only one that you have is the um, portfolio. <coughs> Oh, here we go. Example portfolio. We just close all these. Everything's done in interfaces, so you know. Accumulator. And test. Basic testing how to store uh, portfolio information. Using, of course, the uh, the uh, Chronicle uh, map. Mm -hmm. All right. As you can see, it's somewhat building. There you go, so it's running. And you can see here it's inserting a total of uh, 2.5 2 million records done in eight, eight seconds basically. Uh, and then it totals the portfolio of, uh, value and uh, million records in these amount of milliseconds. So you can see how fast this is. Um, and again, I'm running this on a basic uh, two core, two core uh, Mac, MacBook laptop, which is not much to brag about. So here we got 2.7 mega, megahertz, iCore 5, 8 gigs of RAM. So it's pretty basic. So imagine this is on a high end server. Uh, how fast it would be okay so no no failures at running so that's good so um, this just gives you an idea how this runs and uh, you know just take a look at the code and uh, try to reverse engineer what, what it's doing with these three apps uh, it's probably the simplest way to do it instead of trying to look at everything and be confused with all the different um, example code out there. Hopefully this will help you out. Talk to you later.